In FTL Faster Than Light, the NG are a species made up of nanites, electronics, and maybe some fleshy bits. They do suffocate in the void of space, but there are raging debates on what's underneath all that metal. Well, what's not up for debate is the fact that they are excellent engineers, the best in the galaxy. They have a huge bonus to their repair skill. However, due to their electronic nature, they are awfully fragile, so I wouldn't recommend sending them into honorable melee combat. FTL lore states, despite their planets and star systems being well known to the galaxy, their origins are very unknown. In their shipyards and planets, they often combine themselves into massive organic constructs, and then proceed to create technological marvels, the likes of which the other species of FTL could only dream of creating. They are the strongest supporters of the Galactic Federation, and secretly provide a lot of support to it, despite their very public non-aggression pact with the Rebels. Along with this, they are very close allies to the Zoltan, and have a very negative relation with the Mantis for reasons we'll get into in their video. Overall, they're one of the most useful species to have on your ship, as that massive bonus to repair is amazing. They're essentially this poor little creature, an Igor, so to speak, that you send around your ship repairing things if they're not manning vital systems. They certainly get a lot of work in, and the more they repair, the faster they get at it. NG Ships NG Ships are named after geometric terms that relate to their ship structure. The Tauros has a ring shape. The Vortex is named as such because of its vertices. And the Tetragon has four sides. Oh, the information you learn from digging through the wiki. The key feature of every NG ship is the drone control system. This system powers drones and cannot be manned. Upgrading it allows for more power to be added for more advanced drones. Think of the drone system as similar to the weapon system, but the drones act without your input. For instance, repair drones on your ship have a step-by-step -step list they use to determine their action. Number one priority, putting out fires. Number two priority, fixing the room they start in. Number three priority, fixing the shields. Number four, breaches. And number five, all the rest of the systems. Combat and beam drones automatically attack enemy ships. Boarding drones automatically fight people on other people's ships. Uh, so on and so forth for all of the drones. Drones are extremely useful. However, deploying them does cost a drone part, which is another resource you will have to keep track of. And there is a key difference here. Drones that you deploy on your ship, like repair drones or defense drones, cost one drone part and then are there on the ship until they are destroyed in combat or weapon damage. Other drones like the beam, combat, and defense drones cost a drone part to deploy around your ship and they last for one battle. Drones can be shot down as they approach enemy ships or get in front of their weapons, so you might want to be wary of that. Along with that, the drone bay as well as the different drone schematics you can get have great blue event options. So during events in FTL, if there's a blue option, you generally want to take it, because that means it's going to be good with extra rewards. Another thing to note about the NG ships is that they favor ion weaponry. Ion weapons disable systems, and are very good at weakening shields. Alright, the first NG ship. Although it may look like a pile of junk loosely held together, this well-designed ship relies on drones and ion weaponry. The Tauros. It has two NG and one human to start with, a level 10 reactor, level 2 shields, level 2 engines, a level 1 med bay, level 1 oxygen, level 3 weapon control, level 3 drone control, level 1 piloting, level 1 sensors, and level 1 doors. It starts off with an ion blast 2, as well as a combat drone mark 1, and an augmentation, NG medibot dispersal. It also starts with 16 fuel, 0 missiles, and 15 drone parts, and you unlock it by reaching Sector 5 with any Kestrel cruiser. Now the NG Medibot Dispersal is really cool. It states that it will deploy nanobots that heal your crew, and they heal them anywhere on the ship so long as the med bay is powered, so you don't need to send them there. It is awesome, because your crew is going to be taking constant chip damage from a missile or a stray weapon hitting them. 
However, this will not function if you have a clone bay, so very sad. The Tauros is a really cool ship. It does well early game as the Ion Blast 2 can function very quickly, and the Combat Drone Mark 1 is generally faster than most weapons at firing. For late game, you're going to want to get better weapons, as well as maybe think about upgrading that combat drone. Though the Taurus is pretty versatile, it does take some getting used to, some mastery to use well. Layout B. Heavily understaffed, this ship relies on drones to keep the ship running. The Vortex. Crew, 1 NG, Reactor 9. It starts with level 2 shields, level 1 engines, level 1 medbay, Level 1 Oxygen, Level 3 Shields, Level 3 Weapon Control, Level 3 Drone Control, Level 1 Piloting, and a Level 1 Door System. It has a Heavy Ion and a Heavy Laser 1. For drones, it has an Anti-Personnel Drone and two System Repair Drones, as well as the Augmentation Drone Reactor Booster. It starts off with 16 Fuel, 0 Missiles, and 6 Drone Parts. And to unlock it, you need to earn two out of the three achievements for the NG Cruiser. The Vortex is a very difficult ship to get working. At the very least, I have not had a lot of luck with it. I think it's super cool having one crew member and then a bunch of drones to do different things. Because anti-personnel drones have a lot of health and they're okay at repelling borders. System repair drones are very cool. If you do a little bit of micromanaging, as you should be doing all the time in this game, they're fairly intelligent in repairing what needs to be repaired first. However, the drone reactor booster, it's nice, but drones automatically function at roughly 50% movement speed compared to a normal crew member, so they're already pretty slow. It's okay. I always sell it. And before we talk about Layout C, we have to talk about hacking. Hacking requires one drone part. And that drone part attaches to the foe's ship, and it causes bad for the foe. If one attaches to your ship, it causes bad for you. Zoltan super shields and defense drones will stop the hacking drone from reaching the ship. Though defense drones can miss, unlike with Zoltan shields. You do not need to man this system. And upgrading it allows for powerful and longer hacks. So you go from 4 seconds at level 1, to 7 seconds, to 10 seconds at max level. And hacking a system generally causes it to go offline, so to speak. It acts as if it doesn't have any power in it. So hacking sensors will cause you to be blind to the inside of your ship. And hacking weapons causes them to depower. However, hacking does cause a number of noticeable effects on certain systems. For instance, for instance, if you target the door system, all enemy doors will be locked and treated temporarily as level 3 blast doors. Hacking a hacking system stops the hacking and causes a chance to blow up the hacking drone attached to that ship. Hacking a drone control disables drones, but also has a chance to destroy them. That goes up with your level of hack. Hacking an oxygen system actively drains oxygen. Hacking a mind control system affects your own crew. So if you hack an enemy one, one of their own crew will be mind controlled and start attacking. Hacking a medbay actively deals 13 HP to anyone locked inside it. Layout C. The NG were quick to adapt to the sudden surge of hacking technology. This ship is the result of their research. The Tetragon. Crew. 1 Lanius, 2 NG, Reactor 9. It starts with level 2 shields, level 2 engines, a level 1 clone bay, a level 1 oxygen system, level 1 hacking system, level 1 weapon control system. That is a weak system, it requires more scrap to upgrade initially. A level 2 drone control system, a level 1 piloting system, a level 1 sensor system, and a level 1 door system. It starts off with dual lasers, a beam 1 drone, as well as the augmentation defense scrambler. It starts with 16 fuel, 0 missiles, and 25 drone parts. To unlock it, you need to reach the final sector with the layout B of the NG Cruiser and advanced edition content enabled. Now, the defense scrambler is pretty cool. It prevents enemy defense and anti-combat drones from targeting anything, but generally I sell it for the 40 scrap you can get at stores. The Tetragon is a really cool ship, and I would say it's the most powerful out of all of the NG ships. Having a Lanius is really cool. Hacking is super useful to have, as well as cloning. The Taurus is really cool. It's a solid starting ship, however it doesn't do too well late game. As well as that, 
it kind of struggles with getting drone parts if you choose the never surrender option like I pretty much always do. So it's one you have to be careful with. It's a balance, it's a learning curve, but it does set the standard for the other two NG ships. Its Ion Blast 2 is really good though. If you kit it out with all Ion, you can make a great case for this ship. I like it, it's all reliable. I would say it's a solid, a solid B. A little bit of getting used to, but great once you master it. The Vortex. Drone Reactor Booster kinda sucks. I always sell it. I really want this ship to work. I think it's a super cool idea. However, the defense drone sucks. It has a lot of health and it takes forever to heal in the drone bay. If it had level two door controls, that would make it more useful as you could begin to starve out the enemy of oxygen, helping with extra damage dealt to them. You could upgrade it, but it'd be nice if it started with it. Not having someone to work, the weapon control system is awful. Your weapons are less accurate and they take longer times to charge. That sucks, because the heavy ion and the heavy laser take forever to charge. So it has a lot you need to do with it. You need to get more crew members, you need to get better weapons. It's a very slow ship on top of that. Like I said, I really want it to work. I've had maybe one decent run with it. I got all the way to the final sector, but that was with an absurd amount of luck. So it's... I'm gonna put it as our first E tier. The Tetragon. This ship is awesome. Like, really cool. The weapon kinda sucks, but the hacking, the Linnaeus 2 NG, it's so good. I don't think I've ever had a bad run with this ship. Hacking, I love hacking. It really does play to some good strengths. Along with that, the sheer amount of drone parts it starts with means you're gonna be good on drones for a long time. Trash enemy ships early game. Save up for better weapons. You're going to be golden. Such a good ship. I love it. I can't say enough about it. This one is an easy S tier. In any case, though, I hope to see you in the next one, where we're going to discuss some of my favorite ships, as well as the Mantis.